so with me is Dr. Amit Khera. Um, he's a cardiologist, preventative cardiologist at UT Southwestern Medical Center. Uh, we are here to talk about the new guidelines for taking aspirin. Dr. Kara, what are the new guidelines um, and why did the task force come up with them? With them? Well, well, thank you. So this is uh, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force Guidelines on Aspirin for Primary Prevention. I'm careful with the words because that means people who have never had a heart attack or stroke before and are trying to prevent it. If you already have had a heart attack and stroke, these guidelines do not pertain to you. You know, the reasons they came up with them, largely it's a good thing to do to review the new evidence every few years. The last uh, USPSTF guideline was 2016, so a lot's happened. And mainly some new studies came out that really help us understand that balance of risk and benefit with aspirin. And it was time to sort of relook at that. Uh, so Dr. Kara, what do we make of this? What does this guidance mean to, uh, so, okay, uh, I'm not taking aspirin. I'm, I'm 60 years old, let's say, like, do I not take it? Like, what do I do? So, so that's what these guidelines do. They give us specific parameters. And essentially what they say is if you are 40 to 59 years old, and if your risk of having a heart attack or stroke is a little bit higher. So here they use 10% risk in the next 10 years or higher. Uh, and if you don't have a lot of bleeding issues, then aspirin may be right for you. I think the key point here is that uh, rather than using aspirin routinely, which people did in the past, we need to be more selective and have a conversation with you know, your provider to determine if that's appropriate for you. So essentially, what you're saying is uh, that if you, so let me ask you this, like, so what are the old guidelines? The old guidelines, you automatically took aspirin when you turned a certain age? Right. So I think the, the, the old guidelines, so the old guidelines had a different age range. They're a bit older, 40 to 69. Um, you know, I think that the biggest thing that we're realizing that changed these guidelines is the issue with bleeding. In the most recent studies, now that people are smoking less and, and better treatment of cholesterol and so forth, we realize that the benefit of aspirin is a little bit smaller. And importantly, we're really realizing the increase in major bleeding, what a lot of people don't think about. They think of aspirin like a vitamin almost. But we're talking bleeding in the brain, bleeding ulcers, hospitalization for bleeding. And for most people, on average, you're going to cause more major bleeding than heart attacks and strokes you avoid. That was what, what led to these new guidelines. But in those whose risk of a heart attack or stroke is still higher, that don't have a lot of bleeding issues, it may be right for them. But again, more selective in use. Um, explain to me what aspirin really does. I think I should have asked you this first. <laughs> sure. Aspirin affects the platelets, which are involved in blood clotting. So that's what a heart attack is. You all of a sudden develop a blood clot in your heart artery and there's no blood flow. So aspirin can keep that blood clot from forming uh, to, to prevent a heart attack. And similarly, when we talk about brain arteries, that's a stroke. So that's what aspirin does. But at the same time, if you keep blood from clotting, you can also increase bleeding. And I guess that's why they they came up with the new guidance. Yeah, we always looked at the plus side of aspirin, we always focused on how it benefits individuals, and we really weren't paying much attention to the harm. But given that the benefits have reduced somewhat, they're still there, but they've reduced somewhat in the modern era, we do need to pay attention to those harms a little bit more. What should people do if they're confused about all of this? Like, what is it that they should know and do? Yeah, I think the best way, as always, we say, talk to your talk to your physician, talk to your provider, and, and weigh the risks and benefits. What we want people to avoid doing is just routinely taking aspirin on their own to prevent, you know, for years and years to prevent a heart attack and stroke. That, that's, that's what these guidelines are saying. That should not be routine practice. It should be more individualized in talking to your provider and seeing if this is the best thing for you. Uh, so a little bit different than the way we used to do things. And, you know, it also says, like, if you are at a risk for heart, heart disease, um, what does that mean? Like either when you're at a risk for heart disease, what are the risks we are looking yeah, at? Yeah, so, so there's a calculator that's called, that, that can be used or several, but there's one main one from the US cholesterol guidelines. You, you can look it up online, all, all uh, physicians and practitioners have it. And essentially you plug in your characteristics, your age, your, 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 your gender, your, your cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera. And it'll tell you in the next 10 years, what's your chance of having a heart attack or stroke? Publicly available, if it's above 10%, and you don't have a high risk of bleeding, um, aspirin still may be okay for you. You know, aspirin is, like you said, like vitamin. You could get it at your at your grocery store, you, you know, with your vitamins. So, um, you know, I, I guess 
can, can we can we say safely that like people who were using aspirin as vitamins and not talking to the doctor and just popping yeah, I think that's the concept. Stop? You know, aspirin's been around since uh, you know thousands and th literally thousands of years, and so people just assume it's it's benign, has no no downsides, and that's not and that's not correct. And that I think that's the focus here in realizing that aspirin can be beneficial, but it also has harms, and we've ignored those harms all along. And you know, when we're talking about preventing heart attacks and strokes, people are taking it for decades, and that can you know really lead to ulcers and bleeding risks. So we just have to make sure we're picking the right patients.